using CO2 in an aquarium. It's actually quite easy once you learn how to dial it in. We're going to learn how to do that in this video. Stay tuned. So CO2 is actually easy to use. Now we know about the setup, all about the sources, the diffusion, the regulators and stuff. We're going to go ahead and dig into how to use CO2. But before we do that, if you're new here and you want to learn about aquariums and talk more about aquariums, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. Now in the first video we had an introduction about CO2. I went over some basic concepts and stuff about CO2. Then in video two, we went ahead and went over the setups and the types of CO2 setups you can actually buy that's already ready made that you can just purchase off of Amazon or what have you. In video three, went over the type of sources that you get your CO2 from. Video four, went over the regulations and all about the flow and how do we control it and stuff like that. And then the last video, it was all about diffusion, the type of diffusion devices that we can use to diffuse the CO2 into your tank. So after learning all that stuff, this is where we get to the very meaty part about how to use CO2. And it's actually quite easy. It just does take a little patience and a little learning because it's not a magical number. You have to learn how to dial it in. So let's get to it. Now let's touch base on diffusion just a little bit because I kind of forgot and left it out in the last video. When choosing your diffusion gadget or your tool or your gear or whatever it is that's diffusing the CO2 in your tank, you have to make sure that it creates the most tiniest bubbles as possible or mist have you, okay? This is only for those Mr. Atomizer types of diffusion. If you're using reactor, you should be okay. Now, the reason why we want the smallest bubbles as possible, the CO2 bubbles as possible in our tank, is that we don't want it rushing to the surface of the tank and then leaving the tank itself. We want it to be able to move around the aquarium itself while it's diffusing very, very slowly or being captured by the plants. Yes, the plants do kind of capture the bubbles. The bubbles kind of stick to the plants. The plants actually utilizes that. The smaller the bubbles, the more that will stay in the tank. They'll be able to be pushed to the flow. That's why flow is important for CO2. We push by the flow all around the aquarium, either attaching itself or diffusing into the water itself. It also deals with the pressure stuff that we're talking about. Bigger bubbles take a little longer to diffuse, but smaller bubbles will diffuse faster depending on the pressure or based on the pressure that's in your tank. It's kind of like the more pressure there is, the more that it's going to crush a smaller object. Now let's talk about some general tips about using CO2. First of all, it's not a magical number. I've mentioned this earlier in the video. It's not a magical number. You can give me everything about your tank, the tank size, the lighting that you have, the dosing that you're doing, but I cannot give you a magical number and say, oh, do two bubbles per second or three bubbles per second or what have you. It just doesn't work that way. There's just way too many variables for anyone to actually calculate all that. There's variables about the pressure that's in your tank, the variables of do you have a tank top because that affects pressure, what temperature are you at, how big is your plant load. Yeah, that's what she said. As well as the livestock you have in your tank, as well as how hard your water is, how what your KH, it's just so many variables. But the easiest way to do this is to learn how to dial in. That's what you're going to do is learn how to dial it in. And the best way to start or the best place to start is just start at one bubble per second. And this is where patience kicks in. You have to be patient and watch how well it does with your plants. Okay, so run that at one bubble per second, wait about a week or whatever, see how the plants are doing and say, okay, I'll go ahead and up it to two bubbles per second. And then just wait and then just see how well it does. Okay, see how well your livestock is also reacting to it because too much CO2 is gonna gas your fish. So patience and start at one bubble per second is the best way to learn. And when you grasp it, when you understand it, it'll be easier from here on out. You'll understand how many bubbles per second or how much CO2 that you can put in your tank and stuff like that. And we could actually, in a way, measure how much CO2 is in your tank, kind of, but we'll go ahead and cover that later in this video. And on that note, Keep in mind equilibrium, the equilibrium between the oxygen and CO2 level in your tank. I mentioned this earlier in the videos in this series, both the oxygen level and the CO2 levels are independent. They don't really affect each other in the way that if you put CO2, more CO2 into your tank, you lose oxygen or you put more oxygen in your tank, you lose CO2. It just doesn't work that way. But of course, if you put too much of one thing too quickly, your equilibrium is going to go off and there's just going to be too much like say CO2 in your tank. 
and you start gassing your fish. Or you put too much O2 in your tank and it makes your CO2 ineffective. So remember, just try to keep that balance and I explained it in the earlier videos. Now, I've already mentioned this bubbles per second. Really, that is the measurement that we use to gauge how much CO2 or how quick of the CO2 we're putting into our tank. When you dial in, when you understand your tank, the tank you're specifically working on, then you understand how many bubbles per second you're going to be used and putting into your tank. And a lot of us use that gauge. We kind of use that very rough estimate and say, start at one bubble per second and see where you go. Again, it is just a gauge because once we know how much bubbles per second you've figured out and how to dial in, we could kind of just gauge your uh, tank and take a look at it and see what you have in it. Then we could actually make a kind of suggestion to say, just dial it back a little or ramp it up a little. And bubbles per second is really easy to count for those of you guys that actually need this explanation and haven't figured it out is just run your bubble counter, adjust your needle valve so that you'll have one bubble per second. So you count one, two, three, and a bubble comes up every second. Of course, when you do two bubbles per second, it's two bubbles every second. And of course, three bubbles every second, three bubbles every second, you get the deal. Now CO2 schedule, let's touch base on this because there's various ways to do it. Of course, you only want to run your CO2 when lights are on, and that means that your plants are starting to produce photosynthesis. Now, of course, you don't want to do it when your lights are out because then the plants stop doing photosynthesis and goes in reverse, taking in oxygen and expelling CO2, and suddenly you'll have a massive CO2 spike in your tank and you're gassing your fish. Now, what I usually do is I have the lighting and the CO2 on two separate timers. First, this is what happens. The CO2 turns on an hour before the lights come on. This is to set the tank up to be more efficient, to have CO2 already ready in the tank for the plants to take in once the light comes on. Because once the lights come on, the plants go into photosynthesis. And this is okay. An hour before the lights come on will not kill your fish. It will not saturate your tank with CO2 unless you're blasting the CO2 into your tank, okay? Like I said, dial it in first, see how it works, while the lights are on, while your plants are taking in the CO2 from photosynthesis and adjust from there. But remember, you wanna slowly ramp up your CO2. And usually I find that an hour before lights come on is perfect. Then what happens is that an hour before lights go off, I turn off the CO2. The CO2 goes off, it starts ramping down in the aquarium itself while the plants, you know, kind of ramps down and you're getting them to ramp down a little. It doesn't really affect the plants that much, but it's something to adjust the equilibrium in your tank so that it doesn't go down too fast or to go up too fast. Now, some people use this period called the siesta period. And the siesta period and how it works is basically in the middle of the day, what happens is that it's gonna ramp the tank back up in CO2 so that the plants continues the photosynthesis efficiently and as you know, high as possible so that I could just really push that growth with photosynthesis in a rich CO2 environment. Now, how it works is this. Let's say the light turns on at 12 p.m. It turns off at 8 p.m. So at 3 p.m., what you're gonna do is set your timer to turn it off again for an hour, one hour, okay? The lights go off, but the CO2 is still going. What happens is that the CO2 starts enriching the waters again and pushing that CO2 level back up in your tank so that when the lights come on again, your plants have tons of CO2 rich waters to work in its next period of, C of photosynthesis. Now, does siesta periods work? Yeah, sure, but do you need it? Mm, you don't have to. Again, it's really up to you. See how well it will work for you if you want to, and decide to try it. Okay, measuring CO2. Now there's actually two ways of measuring CO2. So the first way to measure CO2 is using a drop checker. Drop checkers are very popular. You guys have seen it in my previous videos before, in my tanks. A lot of you guys ask me, well, what is that that you have in your tank there? It's a drop checker. So basically what, how it works is this. It's a green color when there's no or less CO2 in your tank. And then what happens is that when there's lots of CO2 in your tank, it turns yellow. If you, supposedly you're in trouble because there's a lot of CO2 in your tank. And that, it's not entirely accurate. Again, I've explained that in the last video about equilibrium, assuming that you have your oxygen levels high and in check with the equilibrium of your CO2, that counter being yellow, you shouldn't panic about because you're nowhere close to gassing your fish. I do it all the time. I run it on yellow on my fish are fine, but you have to know what you're doing. But it's a very easy way to spot check your aquarium and know how much CO2 or if you have too much CO2 in your tank. 
The problem with this method is that there's a delay on it. The color you're seeing at that moment is the actual level in your tank an hour ago, okay? So there's delay. So whatever you're seeing the color change then is what it was actually an hour ago. So the other way to measure CO2 is very easy. It's basically based on measurements and a chart and it's, like I said, very easy. What you have to do is pick up a, and you should already have a pH test kit. Not only that, you have to pick up a KH test kit, okay? So pick up these two test kits. Even if you don't think you need a KH test kit, get a KH test kit because it is important. It does help you measure KH and it is kind of important in just general in fish keeping. And if you don't understand what KH is and all that stuff, check it out and search it on uh, YouTube or whatever people explain it a lot or check out the video that I will have on it sooner or later someday. If I've already made it, you will see it here. So basically what you do is measure the KH in your tank and you measure the pH in your tank currently and then you just cross-reference it on the chart and it'll tell you how many ppms of CO2 is in your tank. What you want to do is raise it and hit those green levels. So it's going to take a little time to dial in, maybe a couple of days to figure out how you could get the uh, rate up, the bubbles per second rate up to reach those levels into the green levels. It's really quite easy. It just takes a little time. Again, patience to do it. Now, the next thing we're talking about is purling, and a lot of people talk about purling. And one of the misconceptions is that if your plants are purling, they're healthy. It doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is that they're ramping up photosynthesis. You provide such a great atmosphere environment in your tank for the plants to grow that is going and ramping up the photosynthesis so it's producing all that stuff in the plant itself and expelling that O2 out of the plants and you're seeing all these really cool bubbles coming out of plants. Now, I gotta admit it's really really cool to watch but it does not necessarily mean it's healthy plants. Unhealthy plants can also pearl because you suddenly gave that environment to grow so keep that in mind just because purling doesn't mean it's healthy the way to tell if plants are healthy or if they're growing healthy is just you. You're watching from your experience and all that. And that's it, guys. That's the end of the CO2 series. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot from the series. I'm very honored that you came on board and followed me along. And you got to remember, using CO2 is not a magic number. It's all about learning and dialing it in and you're going to have to learn it. There is no way for me to just tell you, run it at two bubbles per second, you'll be fine. It just does not work that way. You got to learn. Just like doing a regular planted tank, you got to learn this stuff. You got to be patient and just gain the experience from it. Now, where do you go from here? Well, the next series is on plant fertilization, and that's gonna be a woozy, okay? So if it's not out yet and you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when it comes out. And like always, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below or join our Facebook group. The link's down in the description. And do me a favor and smash that like button and share it where you can. Remember, guys, I love you guys. Stay wet with your tanks. I'll see you in the next video.